At Cossey High School in Norwich, science technician Pauline Williamson has been running the gardening club for the last four years. I'm really proud of it, yes, and, and these students are really proud of what they do. This week, they'll be taking their skills out into the community. They'll be volunteering for a local Norwich-based charity. Mow and Grow tend the gardens for the elderly and disabled in their community and have apparently helped cut crime in the area by over 90% in some cases. Crime is the biggest problem. If the gardens get overgrown, then people can get into the gardens without being seen. Because of the busy school schedule, the volunteers have only one day to transform this garden. It belongs to Felicity. Once a keen gardener, she's found it harder to cope after an accident left her disabled. I gather the teachers and children from Cossie High School are coming along to see what they can do as well, which will be quite a challenge. Their challenge is to come out of their school and make a difference to their community as well as themselves. But will one day be enough to transform this into a neat and safe place? You're up for a challenge, aren't you kids? <laughs> you have got a strimmer and an industrial digger. Just wait until they see the back garden. It's quite, this it's quite one. good it's easy. You've got one day. Mow and Grow was set up in June 2006 and was originally a neighbourhood watch scheme. They work on over 14 gardens a week and with a growing list of referrals, their services are high in demand. The majority of our gardens, they are, as we jokingly call it, a jungle. You walk in and they are just sort of four foot of blackberries or, or brambles. Well, we, we, we go in and find a jungle and then we discover that there is actually a path through there and a, water, um, a pond. I mean, I've done a garden that had three ponds in it and when we walked in, we didn't know the ponds were there. I found one by getting very wet feet. <laughs> If the gardens get overgrown, then people can get into the gardens without being seen um, and there is the chance that they could break in through a door or a window. Whereas if a garden is nicely kept, um, it's much more unlikely that a, a criminal is going to try um, and get in because it's obviously being looked after by a person who's agile and, and fit and can get around. Whereas if you've got an overgrown garden, it shouts elderly person um, who can't sort of do their own gardening and, and they're obviously very vulnerable. The high school team have volunteered to work on one of the gardens at the top of the list of referrals. Felicity has lived here since 1985 but since her accident she's been unable to look after her once well-tended garden. I used to grow all my own vegetables and have a lot of flowers in the garden. So it's very sad to see it go into the state it's got into. Uh, there aren't one or two little hidden treasures in the garden. I've got some nice big yuccas that keep the burglars out. And I've also got a very old gravestone, which I found when I was doing the garden originally. I've also got a piece out the back, which I use for my cats who come visiting. I'm dotty about cats and I like looking after strays. Felicity has a part-time carer, but that hasn't stopped her flat from becoming a target for criminals. They broke in the back bedroom window. Yeah. And uh, you've never seen such a mess in all your life. It's not a mm. nice experience. Everything was everywhere. Mm. Um, I stole a few things, but uh, just wasn't very nice to come home to. It looks like the school team have a very big task ahead of them. The garden that the high school are going to do is going to give them quite a challenge. Uh, there's a lot of grass that needs cutting back. Um, it's on a steep slope, so that will be a challenge to them. And there's yucca plants, um, which are extremely spiky, which will need 
very gentle handling. Um, they have, the lady has a bench that she'd like restored. It will be hard work, they'll be very tired, um, but hopefully if the weather's good, they should have a really good day. But Cossie High School have only got experience on long-term projects. The beautiful wildlife garden they created has taken Pauline and her Ground Force Gardening Club four years to develop. And they spent four months getting plants ready for the Hampton Court Palace Flower Show. How will they manage with only one day to work on Felicity's garden? The garden was designed by 14 students back in 2003. This was just an overgrown area of grass. There was no fence around it. It was a bit of a dumping ground for lots of the, the waste from the school. And it just seemed an ideal opportunity to involve our natural area there and bring it into the school ground so the pupils could actually see the environment in a safe, secure area. The prime focus, obviously, is the pond area with a dipping platform, which we can have at least 15 students safely dipping on that platform. That is the most popular spot for them, basically. It's important to have a garden because you're saving all the wildlife and also like you're helping the environment more. And there's another one. I think my favourite animals have got to be insects and like small mammals, like hey, field mouse and voles and things. Originally the grounds force team, many of the members were part of my nature club. We met on Tuesdays after school. But when we got the invitation from Learning Through Landscapes to uh, provide plants for the Hampton Court Flower Show, this was a much bigger project and I needed more members to actually get on and, and grow all these plants because we were going to have to grow about 500 plants up to a sort of two litre pot size for this show and that was a major effort, raising plants from seedlings um, from March through to June. We only need three more. These are all the same variety. We took them all from the same... I'm really proud of it, yes, and, and these students are really proud of what they do. Yeah, we're tomato taking plants. tomato plants home. Um, and beans. Beans. Yeah. Sunflower Peas. plants. <laughs> yeah. My mum um, used the tomatoes to make a chutney and that was really nice. But after hearing about vulnerable people in the community needing help with their gardens, Pauline's keen to take her students and herself out of their comfort zone. So it'll be quite um, an interesting opportunity for the kids. Um, and they're, they're up for it. They're really keen. Two of Pauline's colleagues from the science department have also volunteered. Student teacher Christine Cohen and Martina Maidment, a science teacher. I think it'd be good to put their skills to use to actually help somebody else. Obviously they've worked in the garden and they've done the shows, but to actually help somebody else I think they'll find very rewarding. You get so many old people these days complaining of young people hanging around and you know, actually sort of seeing how you know, well, beha well behaved, well intentioned most young people actually are. So I, I think that sort of you know, contact between an older person and young people is, is, is something to be encouraged. I reckon it's going to be incredibly overgrown. Um, lots of lots of stuff that's going to need cutting back that they're just unable to do themselves. It's sort of, we can get it into a manageable state, I think that would be the most, the ideal situation, but we'll actually have to wait and see what the situation is when we go and do the assessment on Friday. I mean, if we get it cleared of, sort of the grass mowing, and... It's Friday, two days before they start work on the garden, and they've come to assess the scale of their challenge. Wow! Wow! Oh, my <laughs> word. <laughs> what is this? Oh, that's going to be a mess up. Oh, that's oh, that's very... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're up for a challenge, aren't you, kids? <laughs> yeah, you've got a strimmer and an industrial digger. Hopefully. It's got well, a um, green stone in it. Yeah, you've got no, a... Oh, very... my God. Where? Where? Really? Where? Oh, my God. Tiggles the cat or something. Oh, oh, okay, it, come on, give me some some ideas. What do you reckon to this one then? Like the grass. <laughs> Add a lot more flowers. Okay. Yeah. And uncover the bench. Maybe make a uncover path. the bench. Yeah. Make, make use of that. Yeah, make that a path so she can get to it so she can bend over and hurt herself. Trim down that bush. Which yes. bush? Well, that's the got fell really down there and broke our hands if we're going to get this on Yeah, we'll definitely need to. Is there a cat? Well, yeah. well, the thing that I hadn't thought of is uh, there's a lot of um, 
uh, cat poo. Uh, so we need a poop scoop <laughs> to bring her to bring along because we've got to be careful that we get that cleared before we start working. Really, I was dreading brambles, and yes, we've got them. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm quite looking forward to getting on top of this. <laughs> it might be even worse around the back. <laughs> Have you got your machetes handy? What's a machete? Bring it up. Oh, oh my! Wow. 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 For somebody who's not very active, anything that you can put along this edge, she can actually just puggle away with a little hand fork. So maybe we can make some feature along here. I think this is going to be a really hard challenge, but if we work together, then this could look really nice and be her like dream garden. That grass can come down to a bit of a lawn. It is very tender. It's, it's quite, quite this good. One. It's easy. easy. You've got one day. It's Saturday, the day after their visit to the garden, and they've realised they're going to need some heavy machinery. So Trevor Lynn from Mow and Grow is taking them for some volunteer training. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Birmingham. You look the part. Um, the idea today is I'm going to teach three of your teachers, I believe. Right, OK. <laughs> Hi. And you are? Pauline. Pauline. Martina. Martina. Christina. Christina, right, you're all crazy fools. Right, OK, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to use the strimmers. Um, and we're very lucky today. We have one of the East of England's top trainers in garden machinery. He's given his time up free of charge. His name's Neil Hussey from Ben Burgess. So between us today, we're gonna teach you guys to become experts in the shortest time as possible, in as much of this machinery as possible. And that should set you up for the garden that you're gonna to tackle tomorrow. Marks out to 10. Yeah, like going out of control. It's not the usual trowel and fork. It may take a while to get used to. It's quite heavy actually. It's quite heavy and it's quite it feels quite awkward. So are you ready? Yeah. But it looks like this will speed things up on the day when they start tackling Felicity's garden. I'm going to make a peacock out of it. They're going to leave me here for the rest of the day. And either that or an elephant. I think, well, this will sort of whiz through everything really quite yeah. quickly. So it makes me feel a lot more confident that we can get it done and sends yeah. a lot more time in planting, which is really what's yeah. the interesting bit, isn't it? While the teachers have been working hard, the students are doing the creative bit and started planning the garden. I think the back garden's going to be easier, but the front garden's going to be more like rewardful. Like once it's done, I think the front garden's going to be nicer than the back garden is. Every gravestone has P. W. 1802 on it. Mm. So God knows how old that cat was. Mm. <laughs> I'm most dreading probably the cat food. <laughs> One or two of us that might think that it was going to be quite difficult. I think apart from that, most of us are all really enthusiastic about doing it. We'll manage. Yeah. Let me think. I hope. The big day has arrived, and so far, it looks like the weather will be on their side. Morning. Felicity will be away all day, attending her weekly computer course, so it's the perfect opportunity for the team to do her garden transformation. How's the mound grow going? Very well. I've got some good news. I've got children from the Cossie High School coming over to the garden today, so I'm really excited about that. Pauline and her team are picking up some plants they've grown in their own nursery to bring with them. The plan is to get Felicity's garden finished before she gets back from her computer course. Afternoon, so all the new roots are sort of happy and raring to go. Okay. You ladies, can you leave your bags and get ready to take a tray of plants out to the van, please? Do you want to take your gloves and take them with you? Before they even get started, they've got to deal with the most unglamorous bit. As this um, elderly lady seems to have quite a few cats, the cats have been relieving themselves in this area. And for health and safety, we don't want the kids messing about around cat poo, so where we spot some, we want to get rid of it. For a person, I mean, you'd think it would be a bit bigger. 
Pauline is keen to save as many of Felicity's plants as she can. And it looks like they've saved some of the best ones just in time, while others are sadly not worth saving. Well, when we got here, if we looked for anything that was worthwhile possibly keeping, and there were some roses, and we found four good roses, which didn't look like this. They were very neglected. There was lots of dead wood. They were about three times as high. And what I've done while we were doing other things, I've just pruned them back so they're nice substantial plants. And that is, that's a pretty good plant to get going. And obviously roses and old ladies, they do get on well together. Um, so what I'm doing is re resetting these roses in a safer area, not amongst the grass. Um, they'll be in full sun so they should do well. They've got a good root system and it's a good time for shifting roses anyway now so we're going to get them in and keep our fingers crossed that next year they, they bush out and look good. But will they manage to save one of Felicity's favourite items? This rather rickety garden seat. Uh, well we're just going to try and put it back together because as you can see it's all split and it's kind of beyond repair to be able to sit on it but um, we're going to try our best to fix it so that it looks quite nice. <laughs> While the others are working away in the front, Christine and Martina have got the strimmers out in the back and they're really getting through that overgrown grass quickly. It's coming up for 10 o'clock and they're not doing badly. They've got the ground ready for digging. Move it. Okay. Doing all right. Yeah. It's taking shape and it's good soil. Which is a bonus. You never know what you've got. We're just leaving them in there because they're good for the soil. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it must have been about 12 o'clock <laughs> and it's only 10 past 10. <laughs> we'll finish this, yeah. But Felicity knows only too well the difficulties that lie ahead of them with the garden. I don't know, I don't know how they'll get on with the slope though. That's the only problem with my garden. It's a bit on a hill. And after a couple of hours strimming and raking, the true size of the garden is finally revealed. We've made it look twice as big, <coughs> cut away all the long grass, most of the brambles are out, we're creating beds so we can plant some shrubs and something pretty. But first, they're still having a tough time with those brambles. Maybe if you come this side, shall I see if I can pull it? I'm quite pleased with our progress so far. <laughs> okay. Sue from Mow and Grow has popped down to see how they're doing. She can't resist giving them a hand. Yes, no, I think we'll be doing nicely. The weather, the weather looks like it's going to hold out, doesn't it? So that's the main thing. No, it's coming along nicely. Everyone's working hard. Martina is reluctant to put down the power tools and she's found another victim. I'm just cutting this right back because now she can actually see out of her window and also it was growing up into the window so I've just pulled that out. We're having to use loppers because some of the branches are quite thick but now we can go over it with the hedge trimmer just to make it quick and tidy up a bit. Luckily, Felicity's cats are keeping well out of the way doesn't seem to mind all the noise. <laughs> Actually, it's getting a bit heavy now. I think it's time for a bit of a break and then um, hopefully get digging. There's um, some bricks along the grave that need to be excavated, so it's all good. After a quick lunch break, they're off to a local garden centre that's offered some advice and plants for Felicity's garden. These along the front, in that front yeah. garden, be quite nice. Really good. Let's get it <laughs> OK. It's 
what's the soil like there? Is it very heavy or is it sandy? No, it's like sandy. sandy. sand. Quite no, no, it's it's in between heavy and sand. Right. It's a bit dry. It's kind right. of not. It's heavy so you want something which is a mixture of heights? Yeah. 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 So you're going to have colour all the year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. hopefully. If we don't have colour up there, we can actually show you this. We've got a trolley of plants like which would be suitable with it. <laughs> you could do no, things and you can mix them all together. Yeah. Pauline's also bought some cuttings from her own garden. These are layers off one of my bushes at home. And you can see it's come along the ground and it's thrown roots down that way. So when you plant it, what you've got to do is make sure that any bits with roots are actually in the ground. So you'll actually be making a trench more for it. So all those roots are in the ground. Okay. okay. It's two o'clock. They've got about two hours of light left. That should be plenty of time to get the plants in. The pansies they've got from the garden center are really helping to brighten up the gravestone. Happy grey for a dead cat, or animal. Christine and Martina are relocating some of Felicity's own plants. It'll stop people hopefully going down the side. It's actually when it comes out, it's quite thorny. So it'll just um, keep people out, hopefully. Pauline's moved the plants that were previously dotted all around the garden and created a bed for them. And they're painting the bench in the Cossy High School colours. It is sitable on, but it's like kind of not advisable. You can sit on it without it breaking, but it's not too sturdy. Um, and we've managed to kind of bodge up the end of it. And then, um, yeah, I think the idea is for it to be more of an ornamental feature. With only an hour to go, they've hit a problem, and the threatening rain finally comes down. Uh, it started raining, and we were halfway through painting it, so we've had to hide it indoors out of the way. Um, so that the paint doesn't run off. There's blue paint on the door now. We tried hanging over it, but it didn't work, so we had to bring it in. Yeah, well, if it calms down a bit, then we'll have to go back out. Stop raining. We can't afford to waste Stop time. Raining. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. Because we can't afford to lose time, but just because it's raining. Over on the other side of town, it's coming to the end of Felicity's class. It seems like she might be a bit anxious about what awaits her. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they've got in their minds, because younger minds have different ideas to, to what I have. Luckily enough, the rain didn't last very long, but they haven't got very much time left to get the garden finished. We've got about half an hour left to get finished with planting and put some membrane down. The bench is almost finished. We've just got to move it back into place and plant two lavenders inside. <laughs> Lovely. Do you want me to hold it straight for you? Yeah. Okay, this is just a shrub. This is just some dogwood. As you can see, it doesn't look very interesting at the moment, but um, it's still got lovely coloured branches and in the uh, spring it'll have lovely leaves on it. You don't want any soil on the grass, ladies. I didn't put none there. I didn't eat these whole I just put them back. Now time is really running out. They've only got 10 minutes left before Felicity gets back. Grab a handle, they need to go in together in a big clump. Bunch of space them, five. Space them around there somewhere. Have a five minutes. You ready? Yep, we're chasing the top now, guys. It's oh, starting to get dark. It's four o'clock and they've just made it. They've transformed Felicity's previously overgrown garden into a safe and well cared for place. Bringing plants they've grown in their own nursery and from the garden centre have really added a splash of colour. Beautiful. Because...
pansies over there and some, there's some bulbs as well. Uh, who gets on pansies? Well, all, all, all of us. Oh, it's all my favourite plants. We've <laughs> <laughs> got pansy labels in the grass. We've also got some daffodils. Oh, it's fantastic. I really it's am ever so pleased. Trevor from Mow and Grow has popped over to give his verdict. Fantastic. Well done indeed. It's absolutely brilliant. You should be very, very proud of yourselves. And thank you very much thank indeed. You. Thank you. Thank you. They worked in small groups on different parts of the garden and it all has come together really well. If they can get a sense of community from what they're doing, yeah, we've really achieved something worthwhile from it. It's good. It's not going to take long, a couple of weeks and it's going to be beautiful. I think the expression on the lady's face when she actually came out, is, I don't know, it just sort of makes it feel worthwhile, I think. It makes you feel like a job well done. Really made my day. I think it'll be uh, good if we can get them back again and they can actually see what it likes when everything's settled in. Would you like that, guys? Yeah. 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 They've made a brilliant job of it and they should rightly be proud of what they've done. <laughs>